What's up everybody, Coach Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Overwatch video, and this kicks off our Educational Clips of the Week series, where we're going to be breaking down some of the top Twitch clips, and we're going to be talking about different things that you can learn from each one, so that you can improve yourself as a player, climb the ranked ladder, and have a fun time while doing it, but go check over to the Game Leap website right now, if you want in-depth Overwatch guides, I mean we have tons and tons of guides released daily, so do yourself a favor, Go check it out in the links down below, but without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now kicking it off with the first clip that we have from Arctic FPS, and actually, the person that we're gonna learn something from is the on that he tries to kill here, and watch as he continuously misses over and over again up against this Ana who's on fire, and the Ana actually makes it to safety. Now, at first glance, this doesn't really seem like a teaching moment, but it actually really is, because there are several things that you gotta realize here. First off, the Ana was on fire and being shot at, but she was calm and collected, and she was thinking about how to survive here, not just how to get out of harm's way, and that is an important distinction. You see, going in the most direct path from where she was standing straight to cover would, yes, hypothetically get her to safety quicker, but that actually makes you the most vulnerable and a lot easier for someone like Arctic to just easily shut her down. Yes, it technically took her longer to get from where she was to safety, but because she added in strafes in there, it not only made her far less predictable, but it was ultimately the reason that Arctic couldn't hit a shot on her and just shut her down. Now, on top of that, this is even harder to implement when you're on fire, when you really, really want to just get out of harm's way as quickly as possible. But as an honor player, you need to have hyper focus and you can't panic just like that Ana did and it's the only reason that she survived there where in my personal opinion many many Anas would have just died and just got shut down. Now moving on to the next clip that we got to break down, ML7 is going to teach us fundamentals to aiming. And first off, he's going to hit a sleep on a ball who is actually really, really easy to sleep if he is not slamming you. And I see far too many on us just miss this sleep when it's so, so easy to hit. And you absolutely cannot be missing the sleep dart on Hammonds because sleep dart is one of the best ways to counter a Hammond because unlike all other forms of CC, like hook, like stun, or whatever the case may be, Hammond usually can tank that and get out, but Sleep Dart allows you and your team to basically go in on him and ensure that he dies. So it's very, very powerful in that respect. Now, watch as he fires at this Hammond, and I really want you to notice his last couple of shots here. He's going to put his crosser on the left side of the door because he suspects him to go there. However, right before he leaves on the right side, he's going to flick to the right side of the door and get those final shots in. A lot of times, I see Ana's just wanting to quick scope everything in the game but crosser placement is still important in overwatch whether you're playing a dps a support whatever the case may be having really really solid crosser placement allows you to not only make the shots easier but gives you enough time to get that last bit of damage in before your target leaves your los which is exactly what ml7 did on top of that i really want to shout out that mercy here who actually understood the entire engagement and damage boosted ml7 because if he wouldn't have gotten damage damage boost, he wouldn't have actually gotten these kills, and that was really, really solid awareness from the Mercy's point of view, so I really think it's something to note here. Now, moving on to the next clip that we're going to break down, Defran is going to teach us how to dominate on Ash. Now, right off the bat, notice how Defran first throws this dynamite and simply hides along natural cover, not peeking the enemy, until he hits that dynamite because it's a really easy lineup. Then, once that dynamite pops, he's going to pop out and put even more pressure on the enemy to compound that pressure with the dynamite fire and his own fire now this one uses multiple pressures on an enemy to overwhelm which is a tactic that he's doing himself on ash but you can do this on any character whether it's tracer genji whatever when like your tank jumps in you can compound that pressure yourself very very powerful and important strategy that's used in all of overwatch now the second thing you need to note here is that his mercy is only healing him when he takes damage and then goes right back to damage boosting because that is going to allow him to potentially get one-shot headshots and do the most damage 
And the third thing that you really need to understand about this engagement, this battle between Defran and the enemy both hit scans, is that the enemy DPS did not hit enough shots to zone away Defran from this position. You see, this is a battle of pressure, and this is a lot of the battles that happen between enemy DPS, especially hit scans, is the more shots you get into the enemy, the safer they have to play and the further back they have to go. Like, if the enemy is kept on hitting shots on Defran, Defran would have had to back up so he wasn't at risk of dying, and the enemy team could have took space and pushed further up. And this is the battle that is often created between DPS. Now that being said, however, the enemies really set themselves up to fail here. You gotta understand that the two hit scans, McCree and Soldier, challenged someone that was on the high ground for one, which the high ground automatically gives you better cover and more effective range because you can always just back up and you're safe. And they were challenging someone who is just more effective at those longer ranges in Ash. Up against a McCree and Soldier, the Ash is not really at risk of getting one-shotted and she has more range, which is really, really important for her lethal. Now, what a much smarter team could have done, or even just smarter players, they could have went up to the top left, and they could have took that high ground from him, not only allowing themselves to get closer to the Ash, but taking away that really vital high ground is so, so important. They basically took a duel that they just had a disadvantage in on every axis, not to mention they were up against Defran, and maybe if you were a better aimer than Defran by a fair margin, you could win a disadvantaged fight, but no one's really a better aimer than Defran, so they needed to put themselves at least at a balanced playing field rather than putting themselves at a disadvantage right off the bat. Now moving on to the next big clip that we're going to break down and Yido and Boger are going to actually teach Harblue a lesson here and this is an amazing clip showing us exactly how to get tons of value out of baiting an enemy. So Yido's going to bait Harblue to chase him around the corner and Boger is going to call it. He's going to say hey hey bait him bait him and then Yido rolls around the corner and when he does Harblue chases and Boger hooks him, and together they get a free kill on Harb's Hammond. Now, this is a really awesome clip because the takeaway here is you can do this with the duo tons of times. You see, you gotta understand that enemies are always gonna be looking for opportunities for free kills or to push a weakness, just like Harblue did here. Harblue saw an opportunity and he wanted to capsize on it. However, what Yidl did was fake a weakness, and Boger really capitalized on that, and they used that to convert a kill on Harblue. This is really Really, really powerful but you could do this all over the place where you're fainting a weakness like an Anna that's like oh I'm running away and she runs away behind the corner and her allied McCree is just standing there with his flashbang this is a really really sweet thing to do that can get you some free kills and value so definitely try it out if it's gonna work on a top tier player it's definitely gonna work in your games as well now the next educational clip that we're gonna break down is a clip by get quaked on who's gonna show us how to absolutely roll through the enemy team on doomfist with some smart engagements and a couple of rollouts here or there. Now, before we break down the clip, however, I want you to note that him going in really aggressive here, the cost is not that high because if he dies, he can just regroup with his team who's pushing the cart, but the reward is very high where he could snowball the enemy team, which makes it highly worth doing. Now, watch his rollout here where he intentionally drops himself and times his spacebar press to slightly bounce off that platform. He bounces up and he gets some increased height and distance. Then he's going to get to that roof. He's going to then uppercut, slam, at as he won 80s so he gets that full 120 slam and slams right behind the enemy Ryan on the tour then he's gonna use a left click then a left click animation cancel melee to finish off that tour and get that first entry pick now there are some other takeaways besides just this play here notice how there is only one person pushing the cart and the rest of the team pushes up to help him snowball this is a tried and true tactic and I see way too many people always saying keep three on the cart keep three on the cart as if the enemy team is not gonna be able to contest to you the idea behind snowballing is getting free kills staggering the enemy more getting cart movement anyways and then when the enemy finally want to take a team fight with you you have a bulk of ultimates that you built up by staggering the enemy now because his team went up with him he gets to get his resets back for his cooldowns then go in even more uses ultimate and then his team proceeds to snowball his kills now on top of this what his team does is pushes up and enables him with bubbles nano and fire which is a very good practice you really need to be going in with the team because investing those abilities ahead of time is going to allow you to snowball the enemy team just like we talked about and it really gave them tons of free space on the cart. Now we can't have an educational breakdown without a Genji Blade, right? So for this last clip, Necros is going to teach us some fundamentals about how to have successful blades. Now the enemy is going to beat and Necro makes this really 
awesome call that I don't really see made enough, especially at the lower ranks, where he just calls, do not die, let's wait for this to end. And a lot of times, players need to understand that you can make that call to play passive and give up space. If you have to back up, back up. If you have to give space, give space. All you have to do is not let the enemy engage you right that second. And you do this when the enemy's either using something like trans or some ultimate, supercharger, whatever the case may be, or there's a powerful ultimate that you are close to that you are trying to just barely get to and you don't want to engage or start the fight off until you have that powerful combo now as the beat fades he's gonna actually dash up and he's going to blade the easy target securing the first kill in the lucio and then he's gonna dash to the pit of enemies because when you have nano blade you're not really scared of anything and you just want to go where the bulk of the enemies are and he's gonna basically just clean up from there even an enemy junk rat activates tire which was definitely a mistake why are you gonna activate that when the enemy is blading you and he basically just cleans up and kills the entire enemy team here but this was all based on the initial call and the initial kill on the lucio that just snowballed from there very very solid understanding of what is the win condition of a team fight and this is just something that you should be utilizing no matter what character you're playing in overwatch now all that being said i hope you learned something in this video but if you want to know more we have up-to-date vod reviews advanced clip breakdowns and much much more on the game leap website do yourself a favor go check it out in the links down below but if you enjoyed this video definitely let us know in the comments down below if you have any suggestions or anything like that for the series we would love to hear it but we want to make this a regular series as long as there's a certain amount of support for it so let us know any changes or anything like that in the comments down below but thanks so much for coming by see you next time